Hello everyone, welcome back. It's been a long time, but I was in the mood to make another video today. And I had this idea that you have this single kind of piece um, that is adjusting itself to some certain colors that I'm basically showing it. And I'm going to show you how this is going to be done here in this rather simple grasshopper file. So we, let's get started then. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete all that. Um, and we're going to first um, take in a simple SFG logo, for example, like here. Um, you can download those online, for example, um, on various websites. You can, for example, here I have the um, Bitcoin SFG logo. You can go here on this thing and you can just download the SFG logo, which basically means you have a logo kind of um, usable for with just vector graphics in it. So we're going to use that. Just click OK. And as you see here, we have the logo import now into the Rhino environment. Now, what I want to do is basically distinguish between this part here and the outer part here and then put a grid over it as well. So basically, I will draw this out. I have like this thing here, right? Then I have another one, our logo. And um, this basically is uh, like white. And this other part here is kind of orangey. Um, if I take, I take the exact color here and then click OK. And what I want is to have a grid over it like this. That then responds to the colors in some way. So I kind of have this grid that responds to the, each of those colors. So first of all, we are going to create a grid. So you have, you, if you go under vector and then our grid, then here you have, for example, the squares. And those want to have a plane, a size, and the extent in x and y direction. So what does it mean? So basically right now, it will create a very small grid like over here. If we can zoom in more here at this part, it creates a grid of a few points here. So we're going to create two number sliders, which are actually going to increase this grid here, as you see. And we can just make it bigger. You can you can put this in here if you just double click the canvas and then put 33, it, it automatically gives you a number slider or like 22, whatever number uh, you want to have, have. And I also will take um, a size, and this then creates the size of each of those rectangles. Now, however, they're right now over there, but I want them actually down here. So what I want to do is now I take a point, then I right click, set one point, and put this point to the bottom right over here. And this will then be used as the base plane. It will be like, um, it can also be like an X, Y thing, like it, it can, you can do this if you want to orientate it or if you do like a um, Y, Z plane, for example, then it will be like upright like this, right? But we want to have it like on the ground very, very normally. Then we're going to stretch it out so it will just fit our thing more or less like this. We can just play around a little bit with it and... Um, change the position of the point so it kind of fits. There are other ways also to do this, but I think this way works um, the best so far. Cool. Now that we have that, um, we need to also import um, this little thing here outside and also the inner parts. So first of all, in that matter, I have to ungroup those because they are actually in uh, one group together. So I will want to have them separate. Right now, I only have those here. I put in geometry, right click, set multiple geometries, and then I have that. And actually, let me see if I have my focals so I can also see this as well. Like if you want to, you don't need to put in that. That's just like a, like a plugin um, for our grasshopper that you don't really need. It's just for visualization purposes. Now we have the um, squared thing here. And then we also have our a curve here, but then I also want to have the outer curve as well. So like set of geometry and now we have this the bottom part as well here. Great. Now that we have those two, I want to um, basically define the distance between the middle points and either this point or that point. So what I'm going to use there is I'm going to use um, a curve closest points 
this will then uh, needs a point and, and a curve and the curve will be obviously our curve here and the point will be the midpoint of this. So we're gonna use the cell geometry here as the um, base thing and I'm gonna use the point here. Now, this might make sense for you right now, but it, it's not really, if I'm gonna connect the points together, um, you will see it kind of only connects the points on this geometry here. We don't really want, we want to have the um, geometry connect to all the points. So in this case, well, what are you going to do? We're going to flatten the cells. So each cell kind of operates individually and not in like group of 50, 56. And um, then we are having a lot of those centroid points, but then we're also going to graft the curves itself. So right now we have like, a, like they connect all over the place with each other. That means though, that we have now basically three branches of those 3,136 points. So what we're going to do here is I want to have the closest one of those. So I am going to um, first of all flip the matrix. So right now I will create a group like a 3136 kind of branches of each of those three points in our case here. And then I'm going to, for example, I can take a look at them with a distance and I want to take the shortest distance of those. So I'm going to use the sort list commands and I use the keys and values that I have from here. And this will then, I think in this case, it doesn't really do anything, but if I scroll down a little bit, you see it kind of orders the, the, the list in a way so I can um, use it better. So it's like the, the smallest uh, of them first. So I'm going to use the smallest of item. If do like list item, and then I'm going to make an integer of um, minus one and then um, smaller than zero. This that either makes me choose the last one as minus one or as zero the uh, the the first one of the of the bunch, which then then gives me a value of like the smallest value of each of those items. Now that we have those, we can use those and um, we can already create some stuff with it, which would be very interesting. Uh, for example, if I would be creating, if I would be flattening this and then I do a, ma a matrix, uh, or no, sorry, I do a remap numbers and I'm going to use as a target 255 because this would be our color range. And then the source will be, if you go double click and use boundaries, bounds, and um, you're gonna use this as the source and the values would be the, the list items that we created here from this flattened list. This will then give us um, those values um, in the RGB color spectrum. So if I'm going to, for example, use this as a RGB um, and I use the custom preview, I would be able to um, apply this card that we have here and the color part, but not the geometry, to the geometry that we have created over here. And um, it should give us basically, if I would make this a little bit more invisible, all this stuff, you will see there is some kind of thing happening here as well. Now, why is that like, and we can also increase and decrease this. This basically makes the colors kind of more going into the one direction or the other one. It might not be the best solution to it like this because then I think if we do this really high, it actually will be like a very sharp kind of thing. Like this, it wouldn't look as pretty anymore, but um, yeah. But what I want to do in our case is I not only want to have the thing happening here, but I also want to have that it can react to this shape over here. So we're going to take the same approach that we made here and just copy and paste this and use the other th curve that we defined here. And then we have our values for our other part here. Now that we have that, we can basically also um, use a um, di division and then we can kind of define like, okay, which one of those numbers is like closer um, to each other, like which one is the closer one of the, of the bunch. And if it's more going to more to zero, it's like more tending towards the one. And if it's closer to one or more, it's tending more um, 
towards the other one. Okay, um, but if I do this, I basically have um, our values defined here. And I would be actually able to, um, well, I, I think I can actually play with those values here already. And I can use a gradient um, here and I use the upper limit and a lower limit and the parameters of um, the ones here up here. This one, I think I will leave at zero, but I will keep a second part in there as well. And then here I can actually double click this and then I can apply, um, other colors to it as well, which is super interesting. For example, you can, um, I think, take this is like more of a Bitcoin orange. Um, and I think here I want to have more like of a white thing happening. Um, like this, and then I would be able to apply this material to our thing. And then we kind of have the result that we wanted to have in the first place. And obviously the cool thing is now that if I would, for example, change this part around here and all those parts like around here, I can basically adjust it to my needs as well. For example, if I want to have it like more of a heart shaped and whatever I want to do with it. Now, since I have that, I also want to kind of make a certain kind of shape or a certain uh, um, thing happening to it. So I do like a box rectangle and I will use a height of the list length that we are having here um, and do a range of different numbers. Um, that will be the length of this. And I will use the step minus one because it will create one more um, steps than I want to have. And I will also kind of randomize it with jitter. So I have some kind of um, randomization effect control over it as well. And then I have a, and let me put this in here, da, 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 and I should I should be able to have, I think this might be a little too small. Okay, then I will actually increase this number over here. So we can have different numbers like this, perfect. So now I have like a little bit of, of the thing like that. And I will just drop this into the geometry tab. And as you see, it kind of very neatly um, assigns our geometry over here already. And obviously, if I would change or if I want to change around my my places a bit that I want to, so it would fit more to the narrative that I want to have here, then I can obviously really quickly do that back and forth. And you can change with the colors around. I can also change, I can take some completely different, um, I think there are some very nice presets, for example, like a rainbow thing, kind of as you see here, or I uh, can take, go back to this one, or I can take a, another preset, kind of like a more, like a Ghana vibe, very nice. But I think I will keep with this one with the, Bitcoin color. And obviously I think if I would change to, depending on how you have your view set up, um, you can actually have, can have a very nice um, skylight effect to it as well. So yeah, that's already it for today. And um, I think it kind of like made you think of how this thing can actually work or the different ways of how you can achieve your parametric design. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. And thank you very much for coming. Been a long time, but yeah, maybe I will keep those things up a little bit and make a few more. Thanks and bye-bye.